اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الا الحمد لله احمده واستعينه واستغفره واستهديه واعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من بين خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح لهذه الأمة وكشف الله تعالى به الغمة اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأزواجه وذريته كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأزواجه وذريته كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد فإن الله تعالى يقول يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا وَبَعْدُ أَحِبَّتِي فِي اللَّهِ أسأل الله عز وجل أن يجعلني وإياكم مما يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أولئك الذين هداهم الله وأولئك هم أولو الألباب اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم رب جبرائيل وميكائيل وإسرافيل فاطر السماوات والأرض عالم الغيب والشهادة أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وبعد أيها الإخوة فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته هناك مسؤولية وأمانة جعلها الله عز وجل في أعناقنا معشر البشر ثم هناك مسؤولية وأمانة تزيد على ما جعله الله عز وجل على أكتاف بني آدم تتعلق بك أنت أيها المسلم يا من تحسب نفسك من خير أمة أخرجت للناس كان عليك واجب تجاه ربك وتجاه دينك وتجاه دعوتك وهي أمانة يسألك الله عز وجل عنها كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته ثم بعد ذلك تزيد الأمانة بحسب موقع المرء في هذه الدنيا من نفسه وأهله ومجتمعه فالوالد أو الزوج أو الزوجة تزيد مسؤوليتهما عن غيرهما والولد مسؤول عن أبويه والوالد مسؤول عن أبنائه وهكذا واعلم أنك مسؤول عن مجتمعك وعن جماعتك وعن أقاربك فأسأل الله عز وجل أن يعينني وإياكم على هذه المسؤولية اعلموا أيها الإخوة أن القيادة لها دعائم ولها صفات ينبغي أن تتوفر في القائد أخص منها بالذكر صفتين صفة القدرة والأمانة القدرة والأمانة قال اجعلني على خزائن الأرض إني حفيظ عليم 
فينبغي وأنا إنما أعني بهذا نفسي فينبغي على المرء منا أن يجتهد في أن في أن يحصل هاتين الصفتين وأن يبلغ الكمال فيهما بقدر استطاعته أعانا لله وإياكم على ما فيه الخير والصلاح. My dear brothers and sisters, in 1860, Abraham Lincoln spent a hundred thousand dollars on his presidential campaign. A hundred thousand dollars. Now, when you hear some of those numbers recently, I mean, compare this. The number has been increasing over the years and decades. And then now we hear that the estimated number of the money, the price debt tag, the presidential price tag for the 2012 presidential campaign is somewhere between six to eight billion dollars. At a time where the deficit now here in this country is the worst that it has ever been. I even lost track of the number. I don't even know what the number is. What is it? 14, 16 trillion? 16 trillion something, right? 16 point something trillion. This is how much they're spending so that you and I at the end and the rest of the American people can choose one of two individuals. Who, by the way, so far I can't tell the difference between the two of them. Except that one of them is Republican, the other one is not. One of them, um, you know, I don't know what his religion is, and the other one is Mormon, you know. Except the very basic information that we know. One of them is black, the other one is white. Six to eight billion dollars. The Democratic National Convention plus the RNS or the uh, NR, what is it? National Republican, Republican National Convention, RNS, uh, RNC. The total cost of the two, somewhere around $154 million, the convention alone. This is other than what Governor Romney and President Obama are going to be spend, spending and what they have been spending so far on their presidential campaign. It's just crazy. Unbelievable. President Obama himself spent somewhere around 730 something, 700 plus million dollars to win and become a president. This is how much money they're spending to seize the White House. And then at the end, what do we get? What do we get? How better are things going to get? Right? How better are things going to get? And I'm not here to discourage you or depress you. I'm just telling you, this is what it's costing us. This is how much is being spent. And we have to ask ourselves, those of us who consider themselves American citizens, and those of us who consider themselves to be Muslim, we have to ask ourselves, how long are things going to happen, right, while we're just sitting and watching without really getting involved, understanding the facts, and being more effective. Now, I will leave this topic and get into what are the things that you should be looking for in a leader. What are the things that you should be looking for? There are so many qualities that are very necessary. But the reason I'm bringing this up is to admonish and remind myself, first and foremost. Because each and every single one of us is a leader in whatever capacity that person has. Right? The least you can say is you're leading yourself somewhere. And by the way, there are two places. There are two choices. You're leading yourself towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are going to either qualify to earn the mercy and the grace of Allah azza wa jal and end in gardens of paradise beneath which rivers flow fi jannati wa nahar fi maq'adi sidqin inda maliki muqtadir or the, the person is leading himself 
towards the other abode, abode. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve all of us from ending up there. It's one or the other. There is no... So the least you can say that you're leading yourself. Right? And then on top of that, you... Many of us have families that we're responsible for. Children and spouses. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu quu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Preserve yourselves and your children from a fire. And then on top of that, as a Muslim, you have added responsibilities. And you should be more involved in bringing about a change. And making sure that, that, that you, have part, you, know, you have some kind of contribution within your society. All of that requires skills and qualities and leadership traits. And the two that I would like to emphasize on and talk about today and work on myself starting from today. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam in Surah Yusuf he says to the Pharaoh of that time, the king of that time in Egypt. He says, Qala ja'alni ala khaza'in al ard. He asked to be put in the position of leadership so he can manage and help Egypt and the Egyptian people of that time which, by the way, was one, if not the most powerful civilization of its time. The most powerful nation of that time was headed towards economical catastrophe. And the king had a nightmare about it. And Prophet Yusuf gave the interpretation of it. And he had this projection. And he did not only tell him what, what it was going to go, what was wrong, or what may happen, and what are the risks in the future? But he actually provided him with a solution. He gave him an agenda. He told him what it takes. And this is one thing that we Muslims are missing. We're very good at, I'm not sure how good we are at that as well, but we're very good at critiquing and analyzing things and, and saying what is wrong. Anyone can do that. If you read a little bit, if you do a little research, you can, you can fi find that out easily. But who is providing the community or the society or the country in which we live or the world with alternatives and solutions? And how can we make a difference if we ourselves are not really considering or looking into the sources of our prosperity in the past. And the only thing that will ensure our prosperity in the future. And how are we going to be able to sell that to the world if we're not familiar with it ourselves or if we are second guessing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Just some food for thought. Today's khutbah, the, my purpose is just to make it thought-provoking so you can think and reflect and see where you stand on some of these issues and see what you can do. Because if one person can change one thing in his or her life and if that can affect the people around them or the members of their household or if someone can somehow be inspired you know, with this khutbah and take it to the next level, then I think I have accomplished something today. And my greatest accomplishment would be if I can take this and implement it myself. So, he provided him with an alternative. And then he said to him, Not only did he give him the agenda, but he said, put me in charge. Put me in charge. And there's a very beautiful principle that the scholars mention. And this principle is what is known in Arabic as مَعْرِفَةُ الْمَرْءِ قَدْرَ نَفْسِهِ To know your self-worth, your value, what you can bring, what you can do. To become well acquainted with yourself. To become well familiar with your own strengths and weaknesses, your skills. Not to deceive yourself. And this is a very critical and very important point, brothers and sisters. 
Because what destroys many people is one of two things. Either people who are so arrogant and self-centered, they think they're the best thing that happened to humanity ever. And they think that there is no one better than them. And they think that they know it all. And they can fix it all. And they think that they have solution for everything. And nobody is better than them. And if the world was just to follow them, all this, the, the problems of the world would be solved. And the, only, you know, and the biggest problem with the world or anyone around them is the fact that nobody is listening to them. And usually these are like the best of critics, mashallah. They sit and... And guess who is suffering the most? These same individuals and those people whom are, you know, who, who they are in, in, in charge of or they are supposed to be serving. And on the other hand, we have people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with so many potentials and, ch and, and, and uh, talents. And they don't know their true self-worth and their real value. Low self-esteem. Low self-confidence. They don't know. They don't know what they have, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with. And we are prohibited from doing that. So Prophet Yusuf السلام, says to the king, Put me in charge. Not because I want to be in charge. Not because I'm the most handsome and I'm going to make you look good. Not because I'm the most eloquent of speakers or I'm the best of actors and I can pretty much sell anyone on anything. No. Inni hafizun alim. He tells him precisely and specifically why. He said, Inni hafizun alim. And I want you to look that up. Hafiz. Ali, two qualities that are very essential. Ability, or before even the ability, integrity, and number two, knowledge or ability. The skill that he needs. So the character and the knowledge or the ability to make things happen. And ability, of course, relies on the person's skills as well as the person's knowledge. Two very important components in order for anyone to earn your trust. Who has the integrity? Who is capable of keeping his word and his promises? Who really cares? Not just to be elected, and to be called Mr. President. Or to be called Mayor. Or to be a member of a council. Of some kind. No, rather, who has the integrity and the honesty and who really cares about the issues and what people are going through. Who has a deter determination and genuine desire to bring about a change and help people? Integrity. Honesty. And by the way, if someone breaks his or her promises, and you decide to teach them a lesson and make them pay for that, and not give them your vote, by all means, let them learn their lesson. Brothers and sisters, integrity is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, fear Allah and be mindful of Him and be amongst those who are truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises Prophet Ismail. Right? He praises him for his great and noble qualities. One of which was, he kept his promise. He fulfilled his promise. And there is nothing wrong with falling short. You know, if someone tries, but they could not achieve, there is nothing wrong with saying, you know what? But you should have the integrity to say, sorry, I failed. Sorry, I messed up. Sorry, I changed my priorities. Sorry, I was overwhelmed. Sorry, I didn't think that it was this difficult. There is nothing wrong. The person should be humble enough and try again. 
So brothers and sisters, this is a very important quality to look for. And the second quality is ability. It is not enough for someone to be trustworthy, right? That you basically believe that they have good character and that they're honest and they're genuine. They have to have ability. You're not just going to go to a mechanic just because he's a nice guy. He has to know his stuff. He has to be able to fix the problem and not cause further problems. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the way, in, in Islam, the Prophet sallallahu instructed us not to give uh, authority or leadership or position for someone who is eager to have it and who asks for it. And this is one thing that is making me nervous about one of the, you know, about those candidates, you know. It's like some of them are just dying to become president. They're just dying to become president. Like they really care about people, like they really have the solution. Like, wow, subhanAllah. And they're willing to spend anything and do anything and say anything. Say anything to be elected. This is making me very nervous. So anyways, in Islam, we should, you know, in, in the American context, it's just, it's, it's never going to be applied. Right? You're not supposed to give your vote or your trust or, you know, leadership to someone who, who is asking for it. It should be someone who is, who is qualified and people are, you know, pushing or asking that person. Right? So anyways, this is just a side note. So Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, he said, he said, uh, put me in charge. I want to be in charge of something. Governor somewhere or, you know. So Abu Huray, the Prophet sallallahu had to be very honest with Abu Dhar. He said, Ya Abu Dhar, inni araka da'ifa. Oh Abu Dhar, you're a, you're a weak person. You have some weakness. Not weak in terms of his iman. No. Abu Dhar was one of the greatest companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Very strong iman. Not weak, by the way, in terms of his character. In fact, Abu Dhar was very honest. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, ما أقلت الغبراء يعني الأرض وما أظلت السماء أصدق لهجة من أبي ذر That the earth has not carried nor has the sky covered anyone who is more honest in his speech, of course, other than prophets and messengers, than Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar was, he, he was the person that says it as, you know, whatever is in his heart, I mean, Abu Dhar will just speak his mind. He was known for that. Radiallahu anhu arda. But the Prophet وسلم, said, Ya Abu, ya Abu Dhar, inni araka da'ifan, aw inna kamru'un da'if. You have some weakness. There is something missing, Abu Dhar, that you can. Wa inni uhibbu laka ma uhibbu li nafsi. And I love for you, Abu Dhar, what I love for myself. La ta'amaranna ala, ala thnayn. He said, don't ever put yourself in charge of two individuals. Let alone a city or, or a country or a nation. Or, don't be in charge of anything. Don't take charge of anything. And he said, do not put yourself in charge of, don't accept to be in charge of the wealth of an orphan. Because it is, in another narration it says, for it is a huge responsibility, and on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam disqualified him or rejected his request based on the fact that Abu, Abu Dhar lacked the ability, not necessarily the integrity, both Components, both ingredients are very critical and impo important. And in order for us to earn trust or in order for us to cultivate leadership, we have to make sure that we take care of those two, pursue them and look for them. Let me just say that unless someone earns in your assessment, unless someone earns those two, uh, has those two qualities, and they don't have to be perfect, but unless the person 
you're satisfied with the person's ability as well as the person's integrity, your vote, not only is it a right, but it is a responsibility. So make sure that you, whoever you enable to make decisions on your behalf is someone that you will be able to um, or that you will feel comfortable bearing the responsibility of putting in charge. It is again a responsibility and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable for it. And if someone comes to me after the khutbah and says, oh listen, now I'm confused. Now you made me, like am I supposed to participate or not participate? I'm not here to tell you what to do or what, what not to do or who to vote for or who, who not to vote for. But if I get you to think and analyze and then reach your decision after making your effort and consult in and, and, and making sure that in whatever you do or say you are pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're doing it for the right reason then alhamdulillah I've done my job. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you and I of those who listen and follow the best of what they listen to. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve us and preserve our families and preserve our health and our wealth. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and preserve this community. Brothers and sisters, let me just tell you, inshallah ta'ala, that, that we need to be extra vigilant, inshallah ta'ala. There are a couple of things that, that I need to bring to your attention. One is safety and security. The safety of, and security of yourself, your, 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 the members of your household. As you know, and I'm not trying to scare you or anything, there's no re reason for us to panic or be scared or afraid. That's exactly what those people who are perpetrating these things or propagating those things want. For us to be in a state of fear. And we should not give them that. Not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an clearly says, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي Fear them not and fear me. So we fear no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And we know that. قُلْ لَيُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا That nothing except what Allah has written for us will happen to us, ever. And whatever happens to us will turn out to be good. But it doesn't hurt to be vigilant and to be careful. And this is something that we need to consider um, when we're in, in, in public or when we're anywhere and also when we're around the masjid and be vigilant and care about our own security and not do anything suspicious and also be vigilant or look out for any suspicious activities you know this this time of the year and with this being the election year you know it's, it's kind of uh, important to be to pay attention to that that's one thing the other thing that I wanted to say is that sometimes we we uh, we're very naive about um, you know some of the things that we do, especially when we're around the masjid. And we need to be, we need to be careful. So one of those things that, that sometimes we do with good intention, thinking that we're helping, but in reality we're not helping, we're, you know, is, uh, I'll give you a couple of incidents. One incident was someone showed up that we don't know. Alhamdulillah, in this masjid, specifically in this masjid, I can speak for this masjid. In this masjid, we have committees in place. We have volunteers. We have a system. We have protocols of things. People come here to this masjid because it's available. I have uh, dealt or uh, you know, sat with people who drove two hours to come to this masjid, passing so many masajids, and I'm not trying to speak ill of other masajids or centers, came here to find out or investigate or have their questions answered about Islam, and some of them actually took shahada. People who drove two and three hours to come to this masjid. I said, don't you have another masjid? How many masjid did you have to pass by you know, to come to this masjid? People will say things like, oh, I looked you up on Yelp, and you had good rating. People said good things about you, you know, or on Google. Oh, you guys were very accessible. Oh, your website is beautiful, you know. Oh, when I called the masjid, someone was there. Oh, I could actually speak to someone and make an appointment and sit with someone and get my questions answered. So, alhamdulillah, we have system in place for everything. Whether it's someone who's trying to find out information about Islam, or someone who needs financial help, or someone that, that wants some kind of social service, right? And if we can't provide it ourselves, we have resources that we direct them to. So please trust us. And don't try to do it yourself. If, you know, especially here, when, he, when we are at the masjid. So when someone walks in, direct them to the office. Or have them talk to one of our volunteers or one of the uh, employees of the masjid. Wallahi will take care of them. And if anyone comes to you and complains and says you know, negative things, if it's legitimate complaint, please bring it to our attention. Bring it to my attention. Bring it to the attention of Brother Samar Subra, the president of the board of directors here, or any of the volunteers. We take these things seriously. Right? 
But if someone does not want to talk to us, or they don't want you to bring it to our attention, then there is something wrong. Trust us on this. Trust me. Wallah, I used to be like you. I used to feel you know, sorry for people and try to help them. And guess what? You cause more damage. Sometimes not only would you get other people in trouble, you may get yourself in trouble as well. And you may be inviting the wrong type of people. Right? What if this person has, his, has bad intentions? So please be vigilant and direct them to the right, to the appropriate place. Whether they're asking for financial help or they're asking for, even if it's a question, general question, fatwa. Why are they asking you for fatwa? Well, I need to find this information about Islam. They can go and ask Sheikh Google or they can come and ask the Imam. So please be careful, be, be extra careful. Barakallahu feekum. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you for your good intentions. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you and I of those who um, do what is uh, right and what is best and avoid that which is wrong. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi l'akhirati hasanata wa qina azaab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da idha hadaytana. Wa hab lana min ladunka rahma. Innaka anta lohab ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adi wa l-ihsani wa itai dhil qurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai wa al-munkar wa al-baghi. Ya'adhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Uthkuru Allah yadhkurkum. Wa ashkuruhu ala al-amihi zidkum. Wa la dhikru Allah akbar. Wa Allah ya'alamu ma tasna'un.